Okay. All right, so we are moving on to design. So the first was analysis, and now we are doing design. So once we are done with the analysis of our, our environment, our learners, and everything, we are moving to design. So design now is just like drawing the plan of your, your, your course. So this, the, so this step deals with the instructional approach, assessment instruments, the exercises, but the subject matter content. You know, and if you have to do any lesson planning, you know, and then the technologies or the media that you use in the delivery. So we need to now begin selecting all these things. And all the and I mean and if you don't if you hadn't done the analysis, you will not be able to do this because but in the first place you will not know even the media to use. Because if we, now we are being forced to use um, uh, online media or online technologies to deliver courses. But that's just because we are constrained with COVID-19. I mean, ideally, we would have been in the classroom. And if we were going to be in the classroom, uh, that's going to be different from if you are going to deliver online. So if in your analysis stage, you realize that you have to deliver the course online, or maybe part in the classroom and part online, it will influence the type of media you will select, the type of exercises, the content, and so on and so on. You will not be able to ask students to uh, go and type assessments or assignments and then come and put in your office so that you can mark. Because if you are going to do online, it's all going to be virtual environment or digital. So, so all those things are the things that influence your design. So the design is just like drawing a plan of any, maybe uh, if it's a house, you know, you can write out or draw out the, 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 the plan of the house on paper. Design is not yet, you know, the development. It's just trying to put the plan together. You know. And then at this stage too, you should now be looking at the learning theories you should apply. And that's why we did the learning theories first, because you need to look at the theories and then look at your objectives, your outcomes, your activities that you've planned, and all that should do what we call the constructive alignment. You know, they should all be aligned. So what theories are you applying in your, in your design? So in the design phase, we answer questions like, what will be done? So and who, and where, when, and how. So this is where you now schedule the, the delivery because you need to go from one point to the other, or A to B to C. Now what should the students do? What should the instructors do? You know, where will this be done? Should it be in the classroom, or should it be in the, uh, in the online environment? So what learning theories will you apply? Okay, what content? and strategies will be used. So content is just the main uh, uh, what subject matter area. But then you also need, need to look at the strategies you will use to enhance the learning. Because learning, uh, I mean, teaching is just not a matter of uh, producing the content. You know, so what strategies will you use? Are you going to have assignments? Are you going to have group work and all that? What technologies will be used? And these technologies that you're going to use have to be appropriate, you know, based on the, the design, uh, I mean, the analysis stage. Because if you are set to do online teaching and then you realize that most of your students don't have internet, then of course, it, that, that cannot be possible. And so the technologies that you choose have to be based on your analysis. Now, if you are going to use a system, uh, how will the interface look like? You know, an, an interface, maybe a website or a learning management system, whatever it is, all those ones, you need to take that into consideration. And then your learning outcomes. And how will you even assess the learning? Are you going to have an exam at the end of the day? Or you are going to also do what we call formative or assessment along the way, and at the end, you have what to call summative assessment. In fact, for this course, that's what we're doing. We're relying more on formative assessments. Well, we want to see that at each step, 
that we discuss some things we want to be able to apply and then assess ourselves and see whether we're achieving that before we move on and so we have the format so you need to decide all this before you can you can then move on so documentation now the documentation here no, normally for at the tertiary level what we're doing here when you come there all you get is a course syllabus you know course syllabus is is just woefully inadequate but if you are going to train uh, people you need to have the entire documentation of your uh, the course all the resources all the assessments all the everything have to be clearly designed i'm sure some of you have attended uh, maybe some uh, workshops or programs where you know when you are going through the process somebody has designed everything you know, giving you the the various uh, resources and all that and even how assessment will be done so so you need to have a whole documentation storyboards are just uh, things that you put on paper to show how things are going to be aligned or connected so where are we going from so for for this uh, session this is what we're going to do the next session this is what we're going to do and so on and then for technology of course you have to talk of the user interface the user interface how should it look like how should the user experience the interface? And then we can have what we call prototypes. You can create, at the end of this course, we will be creating what we call prototypes of a course we are going to teach. So uh, prototypes are the ones that we test and then make any changes if we want. And then we can now uh, have our, our final uh, application or final version. Uh, well, some of you who are into some level of uh, technology you will be talking of the graphics the visuals you know that you put on the interface mostly we don't need to worry too much about that i mean if if you are going to do um, serious instructional design of course then you can be talking of trying to understand how to do animations and other things but if you are just teaching your subject as we said the last time you need the help of an instructional designer you know to put your course together and then you know, create the interfaces and all that but once you know your subject you can go ahead to teach but then you need an instructional designer to uh, help you out so there are some tools that we can use you know in the design stage uh, they, most of these are uh, websites they are you know, just like most of these applications you can always register and use a free version and if you want more advanced uh, functionalities then you can pay for it you know. i mentioned Padlet the last time so there's trilo trilo is um, the interface is let me see where i can get it so we'll see so these ones you can just go in there create an account see how it works you know so trilo works more just like the, the Padlet that we talked about the last time so if i open trilo uh, let's see uh, it's a bit, okay. Yeah. Okay, I've already created an account, you know, and I'll just play around with, with, with it. So you can create. So it's just a, a an interface like this, you know, where you can add, you know, so I can remove this. So call them boards. So you can add videos, you can add websites, you can, so text. So whenever you, because if they, they at your design stage you are looking at all the resources that you are going to use so i'll say okay i'm going to use these websites i'm going to use this text i'm going to use this uh, powerpoint slides and all that and so i can have all of them at one place and so and you keep building it you know because but when in, in in technology and education things are changing and so you get new things you can add you get uh, you can take out other ones you know? So the board is there, you can always, when you say add a card, and so the, any information that you have, either online or you have created yourself, you can put them all here. And so you can put videos, websites, and so on. So here, and of course you can share, you can share the, the interface or the platform with you know, collaborators. 
It's just like any social media uh, system. But if you get time, you can play around with it. Just see how, how it works. So, and we also have ThinkLink, which is um, another interface. This one, you can also pull all the, your resources together. So before you even begin uh, developing your course, after your analysis stage, you will now put everything together. So this is also another example of, uh, uh, so it's called thinglink.com. So let me see, uh, instruction do I have here. Yeah. You create an interface, let me use this one. Uh, you create an interface, okay, so the background is just an image that you put in there. And then you see that you can have, you know, so these are online videos that I have. So here, you can even play the video, you know, so these are online videos, you know, there's another one. So all your videos, all your, your texts, all your websites are all on one interface. You know, so this is on uh, instructional design, they can, uh, of course. If you want to read more, then you can. So as you go either on the internet or uh, you are creating your own things, you can assemble all of them on a particular platform. And this is very helpful because at the end of the day, this is where you come to now pick the things that you would want to use for the course. So I have an interface like this with all our uh, activities and our resources so all those, what, what you are, are put here, uh, yeah. So what I'm putting here, these are things that I have uh, designed already in the sense that I have put them all together on one platform. And now when I'm developing the course, I just pick them. I decide, okay, the first week, this is what we're going to do. So I pick the resources and then I put them here. So these are the development stage. But at the design stage, we have these, uh, activities or these uh, platforms that we can use for uh, these things. But the uh, thing link can equally be used for other, uh, let me see, there's something here called community of inquiry, which is, um, it can also be used to, you know, demonstrate certain things. You see that this, for example, you have, there's a model, of a, it's called community of inquiry. But what, they, what they've done here is that, in to teach uh, to teach this model, now you use ThinkLink because what's happening is that you have these overlapping things. But within each, you see that you can have a whole lot of uh, various things that are explaining the things. You know, so if you come to cognitive presence, there's a video here. You can just play the video, and you know, and then uh, it will tell you what uh, cognitive presence. So we're here is. with. No. Tom Moe, physics then, teacher at Fox Chapel Area High School. Yeah. Then you have one, another one here. You even have outside, you know, you can have a website. Okay, so this is going to Wikipedia. So this helps in assembling all the things on one interface. Now, so in this case, you are not going to go to pick a book from here and everything is here. But even if you have, uh, of course, they have, all have to be digital in a week. You can also upload your own uh, your own work if you have created uh, some uh, uh, text or some documents. You can upload them yourself too. So, so these are online technologies. Of course, we all know Microsoft, Microsoft 365. But these days, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint you can use for so many things. You know, we can do a whole lot of things with with PowerPoint. Even with this uh, Zoom we are using, you can actually use micro, Microsoft PowerPoint. And the learning management system is what we are using, so we already know that. And then some instructors use their own websites. So they have course websites. So you can use Google Sites to uh, create a website or other resources, like there's Wix. Wix.com gives you an interface to create your own website. You can create a simple one for free, but then if you want, you can, you can pay uh, for let me go back here and see what I can get. Wix.com. Very simple interface. You can just drag and drop your Wix.com. Now, those of you who might be overwhelmed with this technology, don't worry too much. These are just um, 
These are just things we are trying to expose you to. There are things that are there for you to use. And they are very easy to learn. And so you can, you can always go step by step. You know. So if you go to wix.com, it says get started. You know, so let me see whether it will, I already, okay, you need to create an account and all that. Uh, I think I have an account here. Let me log in and see. If, uh, Oh, I can't remember the password. Anyway, but this is just a, 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 an interface that gives you the opportunity to just, you know, so you can, so this is already how it looks like. And you can change the colors and other things. And you just type in your, your things. It will take care of all the, the programming at the back end and other things. And at the end of the day, you can, you can just see your, your website. It's just like the Google Sites and those other ones. So, so these are all tools you can use to design your course. Now, when you design the courses, it makes things very easy for you because the next stages are now just you know, the development and so on and so on. But in case you are going to re, you are going to teach the course maybe the subsequent year or the subsequent semester. Once you already design it, you know the, it, it becomes easier every time. So, uh, so the design phase is very critical. And now we we'll go to the development stage. So. After analyzing the system, designing, we are now in the development stage. And the development is where you actually build the course. So you start the production of the course. So like I said, it's just like a house. You know, you have to have your plan of the house on paper. And now you, wait, you go with the paper to the ground. And then you begin the, the digging. There's no way you can just wake up and go into a, a plot of land and start digging to build a house. Because in fact, you won't even know where to start. So the development stage is where you now start putting things together. So with the, at this stage, uh, the previous stages, the analysis and the design stage will now influ influence the information and all the, all the things you need to create uh, uh, in the development stage. Each element of the course should be developed to match the design phase. So when you design, it's just like building a house, like I said, you know, what you are putting on the ground should reflect what is on the paper because that must go together. Uh, development can be iterative. You know, once you have created the course, you can test it. I recall I uh, mentioned prototypes and so on. And of course, uh, you have to check so many other things, uh, grammar and even your spellings because people are going to be reading. And so you need to, depend on the level of your learners, no, you need to know the, la the appropriate language to use. And then you avoid, you know, some people are easily put off with uh, grammar, grammatical mistakes or spelling mistakes and so And so you need to clear all this. Sometimes you need the assistance of someone else, you know. And then, of course, if you are using an interface or a web-based interface, space, you need to look at the navigation. How are the students going to click through from one level to the other? Most of these things, the learning management system has simplified them for us. So, so when you're using a learning management system, you don't need to go into details, uh, too many details. The things are already there for you to use. So it has been, uh, they have simplified the processes uh, for us. So in the development stage, you know, of course, you have the learning management system again. You have the course websites that we can create. There's Adobe Creative Cloud. Now, Adobe has all the, uh, I mean, some of the very robust tools that you can use. You know, there's Photoshop that you can use to create images or design images. You know, there's uh, uh, video recording, there's audio recording, and so on and so on. So you can use Adobe, but it's, it's proprietary. You need to buy or you need to pay for it. It's, it can be quite expensive too. So. Google Classroom, I've already mentioned that Office 365, right? And then there's Adobe Spark, which is a video editor. But it's a very simple uh, video editor. If we have time, we'll probably use it because what I usually do, I have not done that in this course. What I usually do is that I do a video introduction. You know, so let me see that I can go to Adobe Spark. So the introduction of the course, so ra rather than having just a text introducing myself and what the course is about. I record a video. So you record a video 
explaining uh, again you need to you need to have an account so I, I won't go through all this but if you have time you can you can look at it adobe spark create it's a simple thing just like this zoom you turn it on you can talk and record you know your video and just save it and then and play it back or you can upload it to your your course and so the next stage is now the implementation so the implementation is actually the teaching of the course so this is where you have done everything the semester has now started and it's time to deliver the course so that's the actual teaching and so the first thing to do is that the course design should be shared with the learner this is something I mean, if you are adopting mostly the constructivist approach, in fact, this is even what most uh, educators are recommending now. The learner should know what he or she is going to undertake right from the beginning to the end. We, do, we hardly do that, you know. So, but, and, and that's because the university system, you know, doesn't give you that flexibility. But if you are going to do training of, um, some uh, either an organization or you are going to teach something that uh, a place that has no constraints then you can look at yeah uh, okay no somebody is asking the design no there, there is a second set of slides so the the first so the first uh, one if you get to the end to be continued leave that one i'll upload the the second set of slides so so that will come after the after we done the delivery. So, so the I'm getting some background. So let me mute. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah. So the the course design should be shared with the learner. So the learner should know the activities that are, that they are going to participate in, the assessment, how they will be assessed at the end of the learning process, and so on and so. And so the decision made. In the design phase will influence the implementation so that this works together so what we've been talking about constructive alignment so you cannot come and start teaching something you did not design or you did not de develop along the way no so you need to be very consistent and it has to be systematic and follow in that order uh, okay yeah so implementation will now involve delivering the content as a course content itself so if you are teaching if your session is on uh, maybe newton's laws of motion or whatever it is you, you that's the content so that has to be delivered so is it going to be if it's in the classroom of course it's direct instruction you just teach the content if it is online okay you can also do what we are doing now you have a powerpoint and then there's the zoom and then you just deliver the content but that's not all. You cannot just uh, deliver content and that, that ends it. No, you need to enhance what we call interaction or communication, actually. So there need to be systems where students can interact with each other and also interact with the instructor. And then the instructor should be able to communicate with students. So you need to look at the resources that will be uh, involved there. So communication and interaction is very critical. Now, the uh, traditional way of teaching used to be content delivery and assessment. So you just, people just go and then, so I draw here. Yeah, lecturers come and simply deliver content and then at the end of the semester or the academic year, then they do assessment. Most of the times we hardly ask for questions but some some people teach and they, they they don't even ask for questions because they i mean they just deliver content and that is it but communication now that we have these technologies i mean you can enhance a whole lot of communication and that's why we have the discussion forum we have the the chats we have the email and all that and so those are supposed to enhance communication and you can even have group activities and the technologies can help you do all that. So once you deliver your content, you need to look at the communication aspect as well as the assessment. So the, let me end this, yeah. The screen is a bit frozen as usual, okay. Yeah, so during implementation, there should be 
continuous monitoring. Uh, somebody is, is using the annotation. You don't, you don't, we don't need to annotate here. So unless you want to demonstrate something, so so don't don't uh, do the do the annotations. Okay. All right. So the implementation there should be continuous monitoring to obtain feedback from learners. So of course, most of the time we do that in the classroom when you are teaching. You ask whether do you understand or do you have any questions and all that. But the, from our experiences, we mostly know that there are a category of students who will never talk in class or who will never ask any question. So it's very difficult to determine whether they are learning or not. You know? But if you use the online platform and everybody is required to contribute, then they are you know, obliged to do so. And some, some of them can have very rich contributions, but maybe because they are shy or they are afraid to talk in class, they, they are not able to do that. So the technology helps. So you can use technologies to obtain feedback from students. And then based on the feedback, you can revise your, your processes or your delivery processes. And that's why we say the system is iterative. So you need to go from one point to the next. And then the technology that we can use, again, you can see that the learning management system is almost running through all the processes. So you can just use the model alone to undertake all these things, the analysis, the design, the development, and so on. But for delivering the content, you can use Google Classroom, you can use Microsoft Teams. That's if it's going to be online or blended. Uh, of course, Zoom is there. You can use Microsoft Office, which has PowerPoint, which has Word. You can type your documents in Word, save them as PDF, and you know, there's Adobe Connect, which also works like Zoom. Uh, but this, uh, okay, it's more just like Zoom, where we have web conferencing or video conferencing and so on. And then there are some things called virtual worlds or virtual reality. We hardly use them here because these require very good internet. You know, this, these are things that are like, um, you can design the tour of a, a museum or something. Uh, and this, this requires a whole lot of bandwidth and fast internet. And so it hardly works here. There's a, there's a platform called Second Life, which you can go in there, create what we call avatars, you know, a representation of yourself. And then you can build things in there. You can actually you know, interact with other people, share your uh, information, and so on, and all that. But there's, there's game-based learning as well, which has a whole lot of virtual uh, wells, but we will not get into that. But at least we should know that they can be used in the implementation process. So in the, and then in assessing the learning, because like we said, the implementation is delivering the content, enhancing the communication, and then you can now assess the learners. And so we can have what we call digital portfolios. So a digital portfolio is something just like now we've seen with the, with the examples we've shown here, either the, uh, the uh, Trilo or the Padlet, or there's another one called Evernote, which is very popular. This gives you a platform to organize all your content. And so if you, have, if you are going to give students assessments, you know, you probably would, in some, some institutions these days, they, they don't have exams. At the end of the instruction, what they have is the student that has to create a digital portfolio. And the portfolio has, has uh, text, it has videos, it has images, animations, and other things. And you put all those together on one platform and the teacher can assess. And so when you create all this, uh, it's a way of assessing the learners. We can use uh, quiz generators to, to have quizzes, but there's a quiz uh, activity for us this week. We'll come to that. You can create what we call wikis. So a wiki is a common platform that you know, all the participants can edit. So you can create, um, like Wikipedia, we all know Wikipedia. I mean, if you go into Wikipedia, you can actually create a page in Wikipedia, and then you can actually edit what is in there. Because if, if something is written about somebody and it's not accurate, you can correct it. And that's what makes uh, the Wikipedia uh, the information in there very credible because if you put something that is inaccurate, another person, and we have thousands and thousands of people who have accounts 
in Wikipedia, and they can go in there and edit whatever is in there. And so in the classroom, you can also create a wiki, and then all the students together will edit and create something at the end of the day. Or they can work in groups, so you can say you have a group wiki, and then write you know, a project, or write a, do an assignment on something. And together they can, they can uh, collaborate or work uh, to produce it. Of course, we know of blocks. Uh, this course, one of the requirements is to create a block. I'm not sure whether we, for the past two times that we've I've, I've taught this course, we're not able to get to that point. So, but we'll get to the point where each student will be required to create your own blog. It's very easy. You know, you can go to Blogger or you can go to WordPress or any other uh, tool. That there are several thousands of them out there. And you can create your own blog. So a blog is just an online journal. I mean, every day you wake up, you can type in something there. You know, it's just, uh, and you no know, very credible bloggers. It's just like the uh, Twitter that, that uh, people are using every day. But before Twitter came, it was the blogs that were very popular. But Twitter has now overtaken. Twitter is what we call a micro blogging site. So you can't write too much on Twitter. But that's what people want. People don't want to read a lot anyway. So, but if you want to do serious content, you know, maybe you are a journalist, you are doing investigations, or you are going around the country, or the, you know, it's good to have a blog because every day there's something to add in there. And so sometimes you can require students to create their own blogs, and then you know periodically go in there and put in you know whatever they've learned and all that. So. So blocks are another way of assessing learning. So we have these tools that we can use to, to do the assess, I mean the implementation stage. And then the final one is the evaluation. So at the end of it all, you now need to evaluate the learning. Now the evaluation is different from assessment. Assessment is you are assessing the learning to see whether your learning outcomes have been met. So the evaluation is you are evaluating the entire process, the entire course. So even the way it was delivered. I know, you know in the traditional classrooms, at the end of the semester, you are given a form to fill that uh, uh, look where you assess the course content, you assess the delivery and the assessments and so on and so on. So the same thing. Evaluation is very critical because that's what will give you the feedback to determine whether everything was done right or some things have to be changed whether you've accomplished your aims and all that. So evaluation, like again, you know, we have the formative. So as you go along, you can be evaluating the processes. And so the ADI model, in fact, some people, if I can look at the last part of it, I'll come to this, yeah. Some people actually put the ADI like this, because the evaluation is influencing every stage. So from the analysis stage, there's some evaluation involved. And so we have what we call the formative evaluation. At the end of it all, you can also do an evaluation, which you call the summative one. So, so evaluation is very critical. So summative, you know, at the end of it. So the aim of evaluation is to determine if the goals have been met, what will be required moving forward. So for the next iteration of your course, uh, what should be changed or what should be added, what should be dropped? So the evaluation is very critical. And it's all aimed at improving things as you go along. And so at the end of it, we can always have surveys, we can use tools that will ask questions and let students respond. So you can survey monkey, you can have question pro. These are tools that you can you know, ask the questions and let people respond. So creative, of course, is a very good tool for getting feedback and evaluation. There's Google Docs or Google Drive, which you, know, you can also create where you can commonly uh, uh, co-create documents, just like I was talking about the wikis. You know, the Google Docs is just more or less like that. I can create a Word document, and everyone you add in there can go in and edit or change anything. And then you can actually use it for evaluation. The blocks, again, and the learn management system, so things in the learn management system will be the discussion forum. So you can have a forum that will ask students, oh, tell us your experiences with this course. But I do that at the end of every course. 
when students come to tell me, you know, you can do it anonymously so that the student doesn't have to have their name in there. Uh, or you can do it, I mean, make it optional. So that if you want to put your name, that's fine. Uh, and the chat system that we looked at briefly last week. So these are all things that we can use to do the evaluation of the course. And then based on the outcome, we can then go back to the analysis stage again. That's if you are going to develop, if you are going to teach the course another time, of course, you have to use the feedback from your evaluation to influence the next iteration of the course. And so as time goes on, you keep improving, improving the, so in fact, the design or the ID model is very critical because there has to be improvement in what you are doing as we go along. We have departed from those years where the lecturers, in fact, there was, uh, there were some lecturers who used the same notes to teach for 20 years. You know, so the same file in, in the, you know, they come and teach the 10 set questions and the subsequent year, the same thing. They say, you can't, I mean, that doesn't just make sense. Because times are changing. You cannot be teaching, even if you are teaching facts, you know, things that we know don't change. But at least your strategy, your delivery strategy should change or should improve. Depend on, even though some students will complain and all that, they didn't care anyway, because that's, you say that's that's uh, that's how they do their things, but things are changing now. We are moving away from that. Uh, so this is a summary of the ID, like we have, we have already mentioned. So in each, so analyze, design, develop, implement. And you see that you come back to the. So it's more like a cycle, and that's why we say it's iterative. You keep going around and around, you know, with the aim of improving uh, things ultimately. So we end with the second set of slides here. So simply recapping, we are talking about designing an instruction. And in design an instruction, we need to go through a process. There are several models as we, I mean, most of them, they're more or less uh, uh, mimic what uh, the RD model is, but mostly it involves the same set of processes. You need to understand who your learners are. You need to have your resources. You need to deliver. And then after delivering, you need to evaluate your entire process. And then use that feedback you know, to go back to the analysis stage. And of course, it doesn't just have to be feedback on the, uh, the course and the delivery alone. Even as time changes, it's just like all of a sudden, we have been asked to move from teaching in class, teaching online. So this is a whole big transition. And so all this go to influence how you design and deliver the course. Okay, so let me pause here. Does anybody have a question or, or a comment? Because we are now going to talk about what we are expected to do this, this week. Now, for the first time, we are now going to have an assignment. So the assignment is due November 20th. I think that's, uh, so you have about two weeks, okay. And then the, there's something I put on the platform called practice quiz. If I go to the platform, so let me, let me see. All right, I can end this. Uh, so th th those who are talking of this, now they, if you go on the platform, yeah, so I had presentation one, which is the learning theories, presentation two, that's the part one of it. So I'll add the one I've just finished, which is the presentation three. So this one talked of the analysis stage of the RD, and then the, the second presentation talks about the rest of them, the, the design development and so on. So that will be added here. And then if I will, let me, yeah. Here, I put a textbook there. I mean, this is one of the recent textbooks which I've written. It's very easy to read. It's a, it's a big uh, file. If you can read it, fine. But if you can't, you can just go on, uh, click on this, and then look at the, the contents and the interesting parts you can read. Okay, so the link to the 
So in most cases, you don't even need to wait for email from me. If you come onto the course platform in the morning, the link will be there and you can click and join the, the Zoom class. Now you can see assignments here, not available yet, and quizzes. So the assignments for the, so I'm going to turn on the, the assignment for the week. So in this case, uh, all right, so if I attend this, make it, uh, all right. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Question? This is my first lecture, please. I'd like to know how, which platform can, uh, oh, can oh, I access oh, oh, I see. Okay, so what it means that you need to send your email uh, to me, your name and your email, and then okay. and then I will create an account for you so that you can come to the platform. So when I create an account, I'll show you, I'll give you the details on how to access the platform. This is a platform we are using. It's a, it's a learning management system platform. So you need to be able to access, this is more or less our classroom. This is our virtual classroom. You see, so, yeah, so you need to be, you need to come on here. And at the end of the, 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 the course, you should also be able to create your own virtual classroom. And that's, so that's one of the requirements. You also have to create your, depending on the course you want to teach, you have to create your, your platform and also put in the contents, just like we're, we are doing here. You know, so, so that's, so also, yeah, so send me your, your email. I'll create the account for you and you can access it. Okay, so here, all right. So if you look at this, now if you are, if you are not able to access this platform, there you are, you are more or less not on, on this course because what is happening is uh, there's no way you can, you can take the course without accessing the platform. This is just like I said. Now, like, like we have assignments uh, one. Now, I, I don't use WhatsApp for, 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 for teaching. I mean, I don't see any, any sense in that. So we have a platform here. And this is where you are supposed to submit your assignments. You know, so you submit your assignment here, then I mark it online, and then you can, you can come back here and see the comments and see your scores and everything. So everything is done virtually. So, so assignment one, it says it's due Friday, uh, November 20th. So if I click on this, there's, there's an assignment here. So that's just what, that's what we've discussed so far. So it says you are required to design and teach a technology facility, I mean technology facility like learning activities on any subject or topic of your choice. So depending on what you are already teaching, or you, know, you can decide to teach maybe history, or it can be just one topic, you know. And then you we want you to follow the five stage processes of analyzing the learners, designing the process, developing the materials, implementing and evaluating. So to have to do that, it first of all says, state the learning goal and at least two objectives. So the course you have decided to teach, what is the, we've talked about the learning goal. It's normally a broad statement. And then the objectives, it says the objectives should be smart or they must be smart. So when you design your objective, at the end of the day, or at the end of this session, the student should be able to do this. You need to check and see whether that's, is smart. I mean, is it achievable? Is it measurable? So now discuss one specific learning theory you will apply in the exercise. So we've talked about behaviorism, uh, constructivism, uh, connectivism, and what cognitivism, those ones. Now we don't do them just out of for nothing. We do them because we want to apply them in the design of the course. And so are you a behaviorist? Are you, I mean, the people have their own philosophies. People, uh, are you, they, I was talking about the, the lecturers, you know, in the universities, in the, the I mean, the, the years gone by, they were specific. I mean, they were more or less behaviorists, you know, so they were, they would just give you the content and then they penalize you or reward you uh, to help you to perform or depend on your performance. That's typical behaviorism. But people have moved away from that, you know, so, 
You got to, so for courses like this, what we look for, I'm, I, I mostly apply the constructivist approach because I want people to construct their own understanding. You know, and so normally we don't have hard and fast rules to say that you must say this or you must say that. And that's why it's open here. It says any topic of your choice. So pick what you want to teach or if you have already been teaching, that's why I'm sure some of you who have already done lesson planning and all that, you, know, you would have an issue with this. And so, but for those of us who are, you know, who are not practitioners in the classroom, but we are in education, you know, these are things we still need to clearly understand. You know, we can apply these models in the design of courses. And in actual fact, if you are even an administrator, you have the, maybe a headmaster or something, you have the ability, you should have the ability to look at the design of a course, you know, and make an input you know, because you understand uh, what is going on. Now, uh, so discuss one appropriate te technology tool you will apply in each of the steps. So we've already mentioned several of them. Uh, so if you pick, if you are saying analysis stage, you are going to use a tool. What tool are you going to use to do the analysis of your learners, you know, of your environment? And so on. we've mentioned all those tools. Now, if you come to the design stage, what tool? Just one. So it says one appropriate technology tool. And then what will you do? Because the course here is about technology enhanced teaching and learning. So it says discuss what you will do with the respective technologies you've identified. So when you say I'm going to use a learning management system here. How are you going to deploy it? Or how are you going to do it? If, I'm going to, if you say I'm going to use Socrative, how are you going to do it? And so on. So that's, that's the approach of this. And if you look at the way marks are distributed, uh, you see that this, this, this takes a lot of, um, now sometimes <clears throat> in most of uh, the, the assessments, if I, even if they say exam, I'm sure, I'm sure even this is one of the past uh, exam questions, yeah. Now, we put the marks there clearly to indicate where you should focus or where you, spend, you should spend more time and energy on. You see, some people start with this, the first one, and then they keep writing and writing. It's only six marks, you know, or this one. You know, and now, by the time you are going to write this, then either maybe the time is up or something. And so you need to look at the way the marks are distributed and apportion your time appropriately. Don't spend your time, you know, that's in the, if it's in an exam, you know, but for an assignment. But even it's, it still goes the same way. Because here we try to limit it. We are saying do not exceed a thousand words, about three to four pages, you know. So you can spend two, day, two pages writing on just number one when it has only six marks. And then you come and you use only one page for this. You see? So you need to look at the way the marks are distributed and then respond appropriately. So, so the instructions here say that use the Times New Roman font, you know, okay, one line spacing, provide your name, of course, that's obvious. But sometimes you don't even need this because I want to submit it now. Now you need to save your file in PDF format. You, know, you can have Microsoft Office, I mean Microsoft Word, or Microsoft or, or PDF, but we want it in PDF. So if you type it in Word, save it as PDF. I'll show that. So for those, for the benefit of those who don't know how to do that. And submit by Friday, November 20th. So, so this has a deadline. Now you are submitting on this platform. So, so upload to this platform by this. And to submit, see if you just scroll down, says add submission. So when you type your document, so if you go to uh, Microsoft Word, so let me open Word here. Yes, okay, so let's say that uh, I go to a new document, blank document. So I type my work here. So this is my work, then file, Save us. Now, this this the you might the interface might look a bit different from what what you uh, have. But at least you should know how to save a file 
as a PDF. You know? So it says save file. So from a uh, Word document, you make it a PDF. You know? And then file name, so assignments, and then you just save. So you are saving it on your computer here. So after you've typed it, you've saved it. Okay, so mine is set to automatically open it by it. Okay. So let's see. Yeah. Okay, so this is a PDF file. Now it's good to always do PDF because sometimes when you are because in Word things can can change. If you are if you are uh, uploading things to uh, resources online and you use Word, you never you never know what will happen. Now before you realize it can be it can be disorganized. And that's why we use PDF. Because if it's a PDF document, you can't you can't alter anything. Uh, opening the PDF says no response. Okay, 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 yeah. So once you save your, know where you save it, either on your desktop or wherever it is. Now you need to come to the platform. And that's why we're saying that this is our classroom. Uh, so you come to the platform. So this is where you will land. Okay. okay. Uh, all you know, you already know how to get here, most of you at least. So once you are here, you scroll down to assignment one, due Friday, click on this. So that's what we've looked at. That's the assignment there, the instructions. And then you scroll all the way down and you say submit or add submission. So you click on this and this is what you will see. So it will say drag and drop. Those of you who know, uh, if you have the file on your desktop, you can just drag and drop it here. Or if you look at the uh, these icons here, there's folder and there's file. We are not using a folder, so I just click on uh, file, and then you would see this it says browse. So I saved the file on my desktop. So I just it opens your desktop uh, the details. Yeah, so your files will look like this. And I said assignment, so click on this. So Save as, you don't need to do anything here. You can just uh, leave them. And then upload. So you see this. So the final step, it has uploaded it, but you haven't saved it because at this point you can still change it. You know? So now you need to just say save the changes. Yeah. So once you've done this, then it will say you have submitted for grading. It will say it has not been graded yet. You know, the due date is this. Now, if you are, if you are late, it will start counting down to say you are two days late, three days late. You can still submit anyway. But if you submit after the deadline, it, the, the, the system will tell you that you are two days late. And if there are penalties for late submission, then it will be applied. So once you submit, that is it. Now you can come back another time. That is after it has been graded. If it's graded, you get an email telling you that the assignment you submitted has been graded. So when you come back, you will see your score and then all the comments that the feedback that we have that I've been given. But like I said, this is formative assessment. So I would want to, to know the level of your understanding of what we've done so far. Now, so that I will dwell much more on the feedback because I want to read what you've done and then I'll give you all the feedback. So I, will, I have to... Uh, yeah, so that's what I usually do. I'll look at what you've done and then I'll give the feedback. And based on the feedback, you can resubmit it if you want. Because these are now scoring. So the, the assignment one, you can see that the marks are allotted there. These are, these are scoring. But the flexibility is that if you score very low and then you look at the feedback I've given you, you can redo it and submit. And then you, you improve your score. You know, because like I said, this is formative assignment, uh, assessment. We are not looking at penalizing students. We are looking at getting students to understand. The, so if the second time you demonstrate that you have incorporated the feedback and this. Now, most of you always get a very, very good score the first time, so you don't need to worry about that. But sometimes some people still have issues. And if you have issues, you have the opportunity to resubmit it and it will be graded. And so, so that's assignment. So if you have any issue, you can either send me an email or you can even call me. You know, my number is on the, on the main page there. So uh, before the, and when you submit, before the, 
deadline, you can actually edit your submission. Maybe uh, if you've seen something that you need to change. So you see that when you say edit, it will bring you back here. Now you can just you know, go to the file again, browse and upload. It will replace, if you do that, it will come and replace what you, you uploaded earlier. So browse, pick another, uh, maybe, okay, let me still pick the same thing. You know, upload. Yeah, so overwrite, yeah. So you can just say overwrite. Or if, yeah, you don't need to submit more than one. So overwrite it. So it will just replace what you, what you did earlier on. That is before the deadline. So when you do it and you look at the assessment, you see that no, you need to add one or two things. You can make the changes and then edit and then overwrite what you submitted earlier on. But if the deadline is passed, then you can't do that. Once you've submitted at the deadline, you cannot change anything. So this is how the assignment system works on the learning management system. Of course, you can also de delete your submission if you want. So, and that's, so that's one of the requirements. So for, on the page here, you go to assignment one. But if you have, those of you who are joining now, if you haven't introduced yourself yet, you go to introduction and introduce yourself. By introducing yourself, you tell us, you know, I've introduced myself here. But normally what I, what I usually do is I, I have a video, a video, five minute video, that means you, know, you can equally do that as well if you want. And then people can, are also introducing themselves. So we need to know who and who are in the classroom. Right now, I don't even know exactly who are in the classroom. I don't know the number. No, I'm yet to get it from administration. I don't know who, are, who and who are taking the course. So, because I've, I've put some people in there, but they've never accessed the platform. So I have to drop them. I'm, I'm assuming that they are not. Uh, after the first assignment is submitted, all those who have never accessed this uh, platform, I have to drop them because I'm assuming that you are not part of the, the course. So if you have introduced yourself, go in there. And the introduction doesn't just end there. You can see that some people are even, uh, you know, you can, if you see somebody here, yeah, you see, great meeting you, you know. So if you see that some of you, somebody has a common you know, background or common interest as you, you can strike an acquaintance with that person, either online here yeah, or maybe you can use WhatsApp and other things. because. You have the same background, you have the same experience, you have the same interest. So the introduction is good. You're not only introducing yourself to me, but to the rest of the class. So that we all know who is in there. And it also gives me an idea of who is taking the course. Because once I read through the introduction, I knew all the people, I mean, your part of my analysis stage. You know, I could tell that you know, most of you are, are in education already anyway. And so there, there are some fundamental things I don't need to be talking about because you already know those things. Now the navigation here, so you can always come back to the, the course page, which is a, a course code here. You just click on it and come back. So like I said, this is the introduction of the course and all that. So you have assignment one. So that is due Friday. Now there's something here called quizzes. Again, if I would, uh, okay, I guess um, if I refresh this here, okay, so here we see trial quiz. Now the quiz, this is just this is just for you to practice, and it's not, um, but it is still a way of assessing learning. Now, so for the quiz, if you, if you open it, you'll see this. It says you have three attempts. Of course, the time limit is five minutes. So these are just a few questions for five minutes. So attempt quiz now. So here it says, because now the quiz is a timed uh, exam. It's more like an online. But most exams these days, um, they do it online. And so, I mean, if you haven't done, I mean, maybe some of you might have done online quizzes before, but if you haven't done it, this is how it works. You know, so you, you start the, 
the quiz, then the time that has been allotted, it starts counting down. So it's when you start, the timer will begin to count down and cannot, you cannot pause and come back. No, it's just like an exam. When you go to the exam hall, they say start work. You can't say, oh, okay, me put my time on hold. I'll go out and count. No, the time starts counting. And so you need to, uh, once you, so it gives you a warning. If you are not ready, then you can cancel so that you don't have to start. But the moment you say attempt quiz and then you say start attempt, then it will start giving you the questions. So these questions have already been, you know, set, and then the various. Well, this is just a multiple choice. You know, the answers are in there. So as an instructor, we will also learn how to create these quizzes, you know, so that you can uh, administer to your students. So here, as a student now, I'm answering this. Online discussion forum is asynchronous. Is it true or false? Can somebody tell me? Can somebody unmute your mic and tell me? Do you remember synchronous and asynchronous? Uh, uh, yeah, what is on the screen? You see, online discussion forum, is it synchronous or asynchronous? Synchronous. Can somebody tell me? So is this true or false? Eh? <laughs> anyway, so it's up to you. So you now have to now if for the the quizzes. Now this just this, the first one is just for for you to practice. So it's non it's non scoring. There will be subsequent ones, and those ones will be scoring. But those ones you have only just one attempt. Once you finish the attempt, that's all you get your score. So this is how this. So once you start. No, so you can answer the question. So I can say true or false. I don't know. So it's up to you. So which of the following best describes the theory of constructivism? So you probably need to, now you cannot see the, the questions, stop the quiz, go and read and then come back. No, you have to be ready to take the quiz before you come and start. Uh, it's just like an exam. You don't see the exam, the questions and then you go and then uh, you know, come back. So here, no, so these are these are really things we've discussed in the classroom. So you answer all of them. Question nine, question ten, okay, and it says finish attempt. So you have to click on the finish. Now what it, what it means here is that if your so it says the answers have been saved. Now because you still have time, so you realize, realize that there's five minutes and I still have some time left. I can go back. No, if I think that I haven't, I need to change something, you know, so I can go back and readjust or change it. So, so long as you are within the time, you can, you know, keep answering. I still have two minutes left, you know. But if I think that I'm done, and I just say submit all and finish. Now, if you don't submit, if you don't click on this and the time is up, it, it goes off. It will just go off and it will record your scope. You know? So by if you click submit all and finish, and it says once you submit, you know you not be able to change any of this. Okay, I say submit all and finish. And then that is it. It's, it's giving me, I said false, but that is wrong. So here, all this, oh, all of them I got wrong. Okay, at least I got one right here. So it will indicate this to you. Now, what is happening here is that because this is just this is just a trial or this is just for practice purposes, you will see this. But if it is a real quiz, all you will see is your grade. You wouldn't see this uh, displayed here. The reason being that we don't want people to answer the questions and then uh, take a, a screenshot of this and send to a friend who has not yet attempted it. No, because I mean, if you have, okay, here I'm, I'm mostly wrong anyway, so, but if I have them right, I can easily you know, uh, take a shot of this and send to my friend who has not yet started. And he can go in and, or he or she can go in and then answer all the questions correctly. So when you finish answering, this is all you will see. You see your grade, you, you took three minutes, and then this is what you got two out of this. Now this, like I said, is practice. So. 
you can go back and do it again. So if I go back to uh, back to the course page, so, and then I go back to quiz, trial quiz, it says attempts allowed three, and so on. So I finished. Okay, that's a does of review because uh, I still have this. If it by here, it says re-attempt the quiz. So I finished this, and then I scored two out of 10. So I can re-attempt it. So I'll go in again, and then I can, I can answer the questions again. So this is just to give you uh, the opportunity to practice how this is done. Subsequently, we're going to have quizzes that you will not have all this. Once you open it, and you answer the questions and submit, that is it. The score you get, that is your score. So here, yeah, I'm answering these questions again. Uh, now, if you skip any, and you try to submit, so maybe if I skip two or three of them, they are not required anyway, but to tell you, okay, so you see, it says question five is not answered, or not yet answered. So if you skip it, it will indicate, so all those that have been answered, it will be indicated there. If you have not answered it, you can go back to it, or click on the question, it will take you back, then you can answer it, uh, and come back. So finish attempt. So once you answer, so you need to check to be sure that all your answers have been, have been saved. And then you still have some questions, I mean some time. So, but if you are done, submit all and finish. Okay, submit. So you have, okay, this time I've got three out of 10. So you realize that you, you have the ability to, you know, because this is a trial one. So this, I mean, of course, if you've already taken online quizzes, you don't need to worry about this, but this is just to give you a practice. But you also, I mean, this is also what we've done in the classroom. So you, you should try to see whether you can get the correct answers. You know, so, and you have five minutes, 10 questions. But in some of the very, just uh, a week ago, the nurses, you know, nurses now, they take their uh, licensing exam online. You know, and so, we had to create a platform for them to practice. Or if you don't practice, and you go all of a sudden and you see the questions, you might, you, I mean, you get intimidated. And so for the nurses at Kulubu, we knew we had to create a whole lot of, uh, some of their past questions, we put them all in there for them to practice and practice. So that when you go into the system, you can easily uh, understand how it works. So this is for you to practice, but at the same time, try to answer the, the questions. Subsequently, you realize that in the, so this, this says, if I come back to my course page, it says, um, yeah, quiz one, trial quiz. You will now start seeing, you know, quiz two, quiz three, and so on, and then assignment. All these are activities, you know, like I said, formative assessment in this course is almost about 70%. In fact, it's the reverse. The final exam, normally, but at the graduate level, uh, at, at uh, where, I, where I teach at GTUC, we don't even have, we don't even write uh, classroom exams. What we do is that we do assessments every step of the way. You know, so, but for this, I know very soon they will ask them for exam questions. You know, and then I'll, I will have to submit exam questions and you go and write an exam. But normally when I'm doing the marking, I don't put too much emphasis on the exam. It's, it's what you do on the day-to-day -day, uh, or on a weekly basis. So assignment one, this is on a scoring. So this one, you need to take your time and do it. But all you need to do is just, you know, you don't have to do it. Once you come here, you can just copy what is in here. So if you highlight this, right click and copy, you can come and paste this in the, you don't need to be reading it directly here. I can come and paste it on, let me delete this. Yeah, paste it here. And so that is the assignment. You don't need to have the whole question before you start answering. No. And then you can, you can answer. Now, the instructions are also very critical. You need to be, we don't want you to exceed. Now, people we want people to write clearly and concisely. So we don't write too much. And so if they say 1,000 words, don't go beyond. They say do not exceed thousand ways. 
Now, these are instructions most students don't even look at. You know, they just keep writing and writing. You know, and that you can be penalized for that. So when we say don't exceed 1,000 words, it, it means we want you to be straightforward. You know, we don't want a whole lot of long sentences and winding sentences here and there. So, so, so assignment one is scoring. So once you submit it by November 20th, then by the following week, you know, so if you come to the course page, and then you will see that you need to come back to, of course, you get an email once the assignment is graded. You get an email. And then if you click on assignment one, you will see your, it will say, you see your grade, and then you see the comments that are put in there. So all the comments, you need to take them as feedback. So on this platform, this is what we are doing now. So we are using this platform to deliver content. So the content is just like the Zoom lecture I'm doing now, but I, I upload all the recordings. So they will be there. And then we'll be doing assignments and then we'll be doing quizzes. At the same time, there might be the need to do uh, online discussion. You know, so the first one is the introduction. And then we have this. We'll go over your Moodle uh, Cloud platform uh, next week so that you begin using the platform as an instructor and not a student. Because as a student, when you go in there, you can't do much. You, know, you, can only, you can only look at what the instructor has put there. But you, the instructor, you need to be able to you know, develop all this for your students. So everything can take place on the online environment. You don't need any face-to-face -face interaction. So that is uh, the activity for this week. So as we go for the rest of the week, but this one is almost two weeks. We have two weeks to submit this. But try to uh, answer the questions here. For now, this is non-scoring. You know? So it says, this is to practice taking an online quiz. You, know? you have 10 questions in five minutes. OK. And uh, just, just the uh, instructions. You have three attempts. You know? And I've done two already. So the first one was uh, two over three, the second one, and you can re-attempt again. So these are, and because you have, the power just, uh, just trying, you can always redo it. But if you, if we now come to the actual quizzes, what we are going to have is that you have, you have only one attempt, and then once you submit, now if you don't answer all this, and your time is up, the thing will just close. No, and then that ends it. So you get your, your score. This time is one out of 10, so I've only got one. Yeah, so this is how the platform works. So for now, we are using it as students, but eventually you are going to create your own, and then you'll be the instructor, where you can now put in all these things for your students to access. Uh, Okay, let me pause here. Is there any question that we need to address or any comments? If you have any, yeah, unmute yes, yourself. Sir. Yeah, just go one after the other. Unmute yourself, and then, and then you can. Yes, you can. Uh, please help me find out. Yeah. I'm a, uh, this is my I heard you saying that the recordings will be on the platform. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the recording. So if you, if you are able to access the platform, I will, you, are, you are the one who, who is here for the first time. Yeah. So, yeah. So when you, I'll send you an email. So you send me your, your email address. Yeah. And then, yeah. So these are the, these are the recordings. So this was lecture one. And now this is uh, lecture two. So today's one, I'll, I'll add it as three. So at the end of the day, all the recordings will be there. And all the PowerPoint slides will also be there. Yeah. But, but that is, that's not the end of the, for, for this course, it's not just the slides and the recordings. You need to, but at the graduate level, we, 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 we emphasize on self-directed learning. You should control the learning yourself. And that's why we have these resources. So if you go to learning theory, so if you open this video, but like we said, I mean, 
there's nothing you can teach on this earth that is not there already. I mean, there's people have created a whole lot of resources. So, so this YouTube video, so these are just extra things for you to, if you have time, and maybe you are lying on your bed, you are before you sleep, you can just take your phone, turn on the video, and listen to you know, a teacher talking about instructional design. Or this is, no, this Welcome. Is a, this presentation was developed by Martha Schwartz. Yeah. So if you look at And most recently, yeah. constructivism emerged as a. So you can watch the videos, you know, but they just go to add to your understanding of what we are talking about. Of course, there are other documents as well. So, so apart from your the PowerPoint and then the video recordings, you, know, you have to access all these other resources. You know, these are PDF documents, you know, what is instructional design, YouTube video. So you click on the video and then you can watch somebody talking about instructional design. You know, so these are just things that we add to them. So they, all these are what are called course resources. So somebody, an education specialist, from web of learning. Yeah, so he's talking about instructional design. So if you listen to all this, they just go to enrich your knowledge. You know, so we are not, we are not, uh, we are not learning for exams as, as uh, we, we used to do in the past, you know, looking for what will come in the exam. So we'll go and learn that and go and write. No, this one, we are learning because we want to know and want to be able to apply the knowledge in our real life situation. And so you have the ability to access all these other resources. But there's a website, definitions of instructional design. You know, these are documents. So, so we need to you know, access all these things. Uh, because it's part of the learning process. Because meeting only two hours a week, I mean, you can't, you can't cover much. You know, so you have to do your own uh, learning. Okay, and then the last thing is for those who are still not able to um, create Hello, a Moodle. Sir. Yes. Sir, please, um, I'd like to know how we'd be able to change the Moodle cloud name into our oh, own. Okay, name. okay, okay, just, just watch. Maybe the next five minutes, I'll just, I'll just show you. We still have about 15 minutes, so. All right. Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. So, so yeah, Thank so those, those who are able to, no, put your cloud name here, that's fine. But for those who have not done that yet, what you have to do is to simply go to Moodle Cloud. So, moodlecloud.com. So, that is, so that is how format funds was, uh, yeah. I just wanted to make this clearly visible so that you can. So it's Moodle. You don't even need to type the HTTP and all that. So it brings you here. So once it, it gets you here, it says get started. Now for those of you who already have accounts, that's fine. Get started because you are, you, are, you are now going to create your own platform as a teacher. And then you're going to use that, this platform to design your course. You see that the assignment says, you know, tell us your learning objectives, your learning. When you are done with that assignment, you are going to take what you've written and put on the platform here. You know, so, so when you come to this Moodle Cloud platform and say, get started, this is what you see. But you can scroll down. I mean, you can pay for, there's no need to talk about the payment now. Because that's, uh, but if you scroll down, it says, try it for free. You see, so you can do a free trial. It's just like most other applications that we have on the internet. So you would have a free trial and then if you want to use it, then you can pay some small amount. You know, and depending on the level you want to use it, you can do that. So, so here you need to create a new account and just follow the instructions. But once you have, you have ever used uh, Facebook or all those things, it's the same thing here. Just follow and create the account. At the end of the day, okay, so here, so just for the benefit of those, you know, agree to all these things and then you go next. And then, and this is what, this is what we, we want you to have. Okay, so we have, you need to provide all your details. And then if you go to the second step, I don't need to go through all this. If you go to the second step, it will ask for your, the name of your platform. You see, so if you come to this once, yeah, uh, let me go back to, 
I'll go back to my random analysis. Oh. Yes, a minute. That is, yeah. I think I went out of, okay. Yeah, so if you look at this, this here, you see that this Anna is here. So it's anna.moodlecloud.com. There's, uh, well, there's Jemima. Okay. So you need to provide your name. And once you provide your name, and then, you know, you get that, uh, uh, the URL is, well, when you go through the process, you get uh, five steps. You get to the end, it will create your platform for you, and it will look like what we have here. So if you open Anna's uh, page, you see that now, of course, you need to be able to log in because here now you cannot, uh, no, I can't, I don't have an account you know, on her, her platform, so I can't log in. But that's how, that's how you, this way you get. So when you get to this point, that's why we're saying that, you know, you need to copy this. URL, we call it the URL or the web address. You know? So the web address is what we want to have pasted here because so Jemima's web address is here. Then Yako has done this. Uh, Moodle Cloud Portal, Mermesa. Okay, we can change this so that it becomes. You know, so each of you create your your Moodle Cloud account, and when you come here, but the instructions are here already. You know, yes. Click on reply, reply, and then you can just paste it. So if mine, so mine will be my name, uh, dot Moodle Cloud, cloud.com. Yeah, so this is going to be your platform. So if you just put it here and you submit, uh, then it will appear in there. So that is uh, my name. Dot. So come here. Once you have created your account, come here and then just uh, reply to this. It's just like a discussion. But we don't need to write anything. Just paste your, your web address here. We just want to be, I want everybody to be on the same page that we've all created the account. Because moving forward, we're going to start using it. So, so if, you, if you are in your account, so let me come back to, this okay so yeah so whenever you land on the dashboard okay so that is my login now you need to when you create the account you are the administrator of the course or i mean of the account and you can now start to create courses we'll come to talk of creating the courses uh, later on but the first thing you might need to do is to see whether you need to customize the your page now, so for those who want to do, go to that next step, you need to come down here to site administration. So site administration is where you now have the opportunity to make all the changes and the customization that you want. You see that you have site administration, users, courses, grades, plugins, a whole too many things that we, you wouldn't even need to bother too much about. No. But to avoid having your page like this, you know, so you know, see somebody says my new my new Moodle site. You know, all of them are the same thing uh, that you cannot distinguish. So you need to change this to your either your name or whatever. And so if you look at it under site administration, now these these tabs here, as you click on them, of course, all the things that are under. So the first is normally the site administration. Now if you go all the way down. You would see messaging, security, the front page. So the front page settings is where you can change the, so the name of the site. You see the mine, I said, you know, so if you look at my site, it's just my name. So you need to change this, my new Moodle site, to your name. You know, and then there's a short name here. So what, this is what appears. Uh, the top left here when I open my, my site. So you can put your short name there, you know, and then you can put the, the heading here. That's what somebody sees when they open your, your account for the, uh, for, I mean, your, your platform for the first time. So it shouldn't be just this, but it should be. So if I were to use mine, uh, so, yeah. 
So here, oh, let me log out of this so that we can see. Yeah, yeah. So we see that this is what is there, and I got this by changing it here. Yeah, so the process is from site administration down there. Site administration. It opens here. You have site administration. You scroll down. You go to. There are so many settings. Then let's not worry about them. The defaults are all fine. So, uh, and then you have your front page settings. So this is where you can change the name. You can add something, but don't worry about these ones. Some of these don't respond because even because you're using a free version. Some of these will not respond. You can play around with them and see, but they will not uh, respond the same way as if you were paying because for the free version. Some of the things are limited. So whatever you do, you just need to you know, save changes at the end. And so that's what will change your my new Moodle site to your name. You can decide to call it your name, your e-learning site, or your online learning platform, or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be exactly e-learning site. It can be anything. So that's that's the first thing you need to do. I don't need to overload people now, so we can be going step by step. But for those of you who are a bit more savvy when it comes to these things, you can start seeing some of the things mm -hmm. in there. In fact, if you go to appearance, the appearance of your site, there are what we call themes. The theme is how it appears. So the, if I go to the theme selector, for example, now it has this again for the free version, they are limited. No. So this is how, no, so you can change a theme to whichever way you want. You know? So if I say, so now this is called Boost. So this is how it looks like, that's the interface. If I decide to change it to Classic, use Classic theme, you know, Classic. Okay, so I click on this. Um, so once I say that, you see that it has changed the entire interface. So this is a, this is a Classic Moodle. It's type totally different from how it looked, you know, if I can go back to this, you know, whilst I try to go back here. So this changes the entire, you know, I, I can come back to, okay, team selector again. So boost classic Moodle Cloud. If I change to Moodle Cloud, I can click on this. Now you see that, oh, let me go back to dashboard. Yeah, so this, I have some other things here, that's why it's open. See that it's, the appearance here is slightly different from how it looked like, you know, originally. So you have the option of, of changing or of making changes to the way your site appears. And so if I go down back to site, address my site administration. So the site administration is where you have the opportunity now. If you are not the administrator of the site, of course, you can't do any of these things. So you need to be, if you are just a teacher or well, maybe a teacher has some things you can do, but uh, for a, a student, there's very little you can do with, with this. But once you create the site yourself, you are the administrator and you can change the, so if I go to team selector, um, I want to go back to the original, which is, the boost team. So if I say use this team, now it comes back to the way that's the default, how it was looking. So okay, it's now okay, yeah. So the, the so you can decide to change the way your your interface looks like. So now we are we're not going deep into the what we call the styles, the the styles. You see, you can change the colors and the sizes of all these things, but we don't need to, that's not the focus of this course. We're not doing the interface design. And so this gives you your ability to customize your, your site, the way you want it to, uh, it to look like. You know. So in winding down, yeah, that's where we have, there are ways of, you, you need to create yours, you might notice that maybe there's, um, a difference in yours, the way yours will look like from mine, because you can customize the, the, the page, the dashboard. Customize means you can move, you, see, you can read. There's something called 
Okay. Yeah, you can really move, you can move around these blocks. You know. Latest announcements, if you have an announcement and all that. But we'll come to talk of this when we are doing the, when we start our designs. So, but for now, what you have to do is try as much as possible to get to this page. As for those of you who have not got here yet, and then, uh, of course, the videos are there, so you wouldn't have lost much if you were everywhere, if you didn't participate in the previous classes. But then, assignment one here, and this is required, or this is mandatory. So let me log in again. So yeah, so here I want to log into the student uh, version. Okay. Now, so the next uh, time, we will now look at how you can add users to your, your, your site and how you can enroll. There are two steps. You need to add users to the site, and then you can enroll the users to your course. So we'll look at those steps. We need to do all that before we now start the design. So by the time you finish your first assignment, then we'll be ready to start you know, putting you know, things here and there on our platform you know, as an instructor. And then, of course, we would want you to enroll, enroll us as students so that we can uh, enter the, the course and then you know, see what is in there as well. So here, assignment one is it now. So if you are in this course and you have not accessed this platform yet, you have up to November 20th. After November 20th, if you've never, because if I go to, if I go to the course here, so this is the course as an instructor, and I go to participants. Participants. Now, if you do that now, you wouldn't see anything because you don't have any people in your course. So, so I can see all those in the course. Now, if I look at last access to the course, see, so there are some people here who have never, says never, never, never. So after the December, I mean, November 20th, if you've never accessed the course, I'm going to take you out. But I'm going to assume that you are not. Because once we submit assignment one, and then it's graded, and I'm not going to admit any students anymore because we would have gone too far. So if you've never, if you are in the course and you've never accessed the platform, make sure you do that, else I will take you out. So this, there are some people who have accessed it, but long time ago. No, this every week at least you need to access the platform at least once, you know, because there are always new resources there. No, but for this week, there's a whole lot you have to do. No, you have to, you cannot access the course only once because you have to submit your assignments. Of course, the assignment goes until November 20th anyway, but, but you have to do the trial quiz. This one is open, it doesn't have a deadline, you know, so you can, you can look at that. And then we have all these other. Now you notice that they have to turn, we we'll also look at this then editing off. You know, so in your course, we haven't created the courses yet. So we'll come to that. I won't talk about this for now. So, so that is the activity for the week. You would, I'll upload the recording, lecture three, and then you have assigned. So the recommendation is that you click on this and then you you don't need to worry about coming back here for the assignment. You just need to pick the, the instructions or the question. Now, and you can be working on this. Of course, you need to work on this offline. Now, type it as a Word document, save it, and then you come back here, and then you submit it, at least before the deadline. But then, the quiz, this one, you need to try it. Too. So trial quiz, go in there, and then you can say you have three attempts, Continue last attempt and so on. So, so you have these exercises to do. So you can have you know, answer the questions here. So this is the okay leave. So this is the platform you are, we are working with, and you are expected to participate. So participation course or class participation is going. So we are going to be having scores for all these. In fact, we use, there's a way the system records. You see, when if you download this, the system will record it. So there's something called uh, the logs. I can always go into the, the system and see who and who have actually, or if I ask you to read this, but we used to give marks for 
students who have downloaded all this. So, because we are only assuming that once you've downloaded it, you are going to read it, even though we are not there to see whether you've read it or not. But, you know, we expect that if you are participating in the course, you should be accessing all the resources that are presented there. So, so that is the, our time is up anyway. So let me wrap up. Is there any, has anybody got a question? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, we spoke about uh, the wiki, the Wikipedia app. They were saying that if someone puts in an information, you can go and better it. Yeah. What if it's good as a good thing there? Someone also goes to destroy that. Is it possible? Uh, no, 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 no. What's happening is uh, it's being monitored. Okay. No, they, they, yeah, it's being it's being monitored. So. In fact, when you do it, it doesn't just reflect immediately. It has to go through a moderation process. You see, so yeah, if you go to Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia, yeah, okay. So what's happening is you can, so the, in fact, there are millions of people now who have accounts in Wikipedia. You know, so the English version, because we have, have it in several languages anyway. You see that you can, Create an account. Uh, if you look at the top right there, you know, yeah, you can create an account, or you can, if you already have an account, you can log in. I, I've logged, it's a long time since I logged in. I don't know whether I can remember why. I, I don't know. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure whether this is, uh, I, I can't remember my password anyway. Yeah, but if you, if you log in, what's happening is that you can always, if there's a, an article or a page that has something that you think you can enhance, but even if you yeah. search for anything, so let's go to information technology or instructional or system. So okay. it, with, the, with, the, with the quizzes, after you finish and you send and uh, you get it to, you want to do it the second time, is it the same questions that will come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the same set of questions, yeah. Okay. Yeah, these are just 10 questions. You know? So they probably will not, they will not appear the same order, the same sequence. And the answers will also be reshuffled you know, by, oh, the same yeah. set of, by the same set of questions. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But in the, because it's non-scoring, so you can redo it. But if it's a scoring quiz, once you submit, that is it. You can't, you can't, um, yeah. So the Wikipedia, yeah. So if you, if you can edit, I mean, if you read something and you think that it's not uh, appropriate or it's not accurate, you can make a change or you can even add references. And so. so any article in Wikipedia can be enhanced. And that's why it, is, it has been latest. In fact, if you ask for anything that has just happened in the last five minutes, maybe, but when, when, when Mandela died, for example, in fact, Wikipedia, it was already reported in Wikipedia even before they announced it officially because I'm sure somebody just heard it or somebody in the house or the hospital knew that the person had died. So he went, went to Mandela's page, Mandela. Uh, so let me see. Quickly went to Mandela, yeah, Nelson Mandela's page, yeah. And then just edited this, 16 June, 1999. So, so on the 16th, you know, three, four minutes after the man died, this had, this had changed. Because, you know, so it gives you up to the minute information. And it's very accurate. Because if you are, if you are a Mandela family member or you know something about Mandela and then you, you come and read something and see that it's not uh, accurate, you can change it. But it's subject to moderation. I mean, and to those who are running it, you know, they get an alert and then you can check and see before they allow it to, because they can always they can always roll it back. That's the advantage of the wiki. Whatever you do is saved, and the previous version is still there. So if people see that no, this is not correct, they can easily go back to the previous version. So uh, if we have time, we'll create a wiki on the platform and see see how it works. Okay, all right. So let's. Some of you have courses to. I mean, other classes to go to. So so I think we can we can wrap up now. And so just. If you have not, uh, if I have not created an account for you, send me an email. So you can send me uh, either a text or WhatsApp to that number, or send me, send me an email here. I have my website here. If anybody wants, is interested in reading a bit more about me, that's fine. You can go to my, 
by website. I'm just opening it here. I'm not sure whether it's, it's uh, I'm looking at, uh, my internet has slowed down, or my, my site has slowed down. Okay, so it's just my name.com. Yeah. And of course, we haven't met face to face, but uh, that is me and my graduation and all that. I have some pictures in there. But uh, there's a whole lot of other things about me that you can, the publications I've done, the presentations, conferences. I even have my CV here and all that. I mean, anybody interested can read a bit about me there. Uh, but that's not part of the course, you know. It's just, uh, but then, so here there's a syllabus, which I will change. I don't like the way the, 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 the syllabus was done. Uh, I'll change it. And there's this textbook I'm recommending, Teaching the Digital Age, uh, by one of the gurus in, in this field. So you can open it and then look at the videos. It's a very big document. You can download it, but uh, that's if you have good internet, you can download it. We are not following what is in the book there. We are just, it's just like I said, it's just uh, information there that will, that, that will, it's a free book, an ebook. It's free, yeah, so you have uh, 20 bits. You wrote the book, so you can, yeah. Uh, where are the other one? Contents, yeah. So you can look at the contents here. I think my internet has slowed down, so okay. I'm not all right. But that's that's uh, just one of the resources that we can use, uh, and then of course, I'll have the recordings and then uh, assignments to do this week, quiz for you to try. After this, no, next week I'll have, no, maybe after two weeks, after we've covered about another two topics, I will now have a quiz and that quiz, and all these are contributing to your final, your final grade. Uh, so indeed, even if you do the assignments, because like I said, this, this assignment here was one of the exam questions. You know. But normally what I do is that I, I give them as assignments, and then I give you feedback. And then I try to see when you write the final exam. You know, I try to see whether there's an improvement. In, so it's the same question you are likely to see. So if you, if you are, so that, that just gives me an idea of whether learning has taken place. Because you do something and you are, you are scoring maybe 50, and then I give you feedback, and then uh, you come to see it again. At least I expect an improvement. Uh, so. So the assignments are critical, but we record all the, the grades here, and then finally we use this as all contributing to your final grade. Yeah. Of course, the final grade too, once you are in a formal uh, university course, final grade is, is critical, you need it. But my focus is more on the learning. You know, I want to see that people have actually learned what we set out to learn and not getting 100%. Uh, that's, that's more my focus. That's why I rely more on the formative uh, assessments. Okay, I think it's, it's time. So if anyone has a question, let me know. Uh, like I said, you can get in touch. And then we can, so we can end it here. And then you can go to the platform and carry out the activities. And then we'll meet again on Saturday morning. Okay. Thanks. You know. oh, all right. Okay, so bye-bye. Yeah. Uh.